Howdy folks, welcome back to uh, a relatively quick Elite Dangerous video today, uh, which I felt that I had to do because Premium Beta 3 is now out and there's a whole bunch of changes and improvements. This video, by the way, is dedicated to Daniel Geronimo. Daniel threatened to unsubscribe if I did another Elite Dangerous video, so uh, see ya! <laughs> Well, Beta 3 has reset everybody's progress. You're back to Azaban Orbital, the starting location, with your crappy little Sidewinder. However, it does seem to be the case that um, those of us who were playing prior to Beta 3 have retained the cash value of all the assets that we'd accumulated in previous versions of the game. So I'm starting off here with something like 140,000 credits in the bank, you know, which is nice. When you take off for the first time, you just saw me running through the pre-flight checklist there. Um, you have to do it the first time you launch your ship. It's entirely optional after that. And the first time you take off, hopefully, the first thing you'll notice are the vastly improved graphics on planetary bodies. There's one right there. In Beta 3, they are now simulating the motion of surface water and the formation and melting of ice caps on all planetary bodies. So, uh, I mean, just look at that. Obviously, we're on the night side, so we can't see a hell of a lot, but the sun coming up over the horizon there, very, very pretty. Now, aside from that, the other main features of Beta 3 are, well, they've expanded the size of the playing area. It now includes 2,400 star systems, which is, you know, still the barest fraction of the 400 billion star systems that are going to be in the final release. They've also introduced two new ships, the Federal Dropship and the Imperial Clipper, um, and the ability to own more than one ship at the same time. Obviously you can only fly one ship at a time, but you now have the option of owning multiple ships parked in various orbitals scattered around the galaxy. They've also introduced a new equipment module, the Frameshift Drive Interdictor, which is a piece of equipment you can fit to your ship. Uh, and what it basically does is you target a ship that's flying past in supercruise, you hit them with the Frameshift Drive Interdictor. I believe it has to be operated from behind your target, so it's not you know, completely overpowered. And uh, it basically disrupts their engine, forces them to drop out of supercruise and into real space, where you can have your wicked way with them. But the focus of today's video is the other main feature that's been introduced in Beta 3, and that's mining. You can now earn a living mining asteroids in Elite Dangerous. So, if the idea of prospecting for a living in the asteroid belts of the galaxy is uh, appealing to you, then this is what you're going to need to do. First, you're going to need a ship that's slightly bigger than a Sidewinder, and the obvious first choice is the cheap and cheerful Zorgan Peterson Hauler. It's the transit van of the spaceways. It's cheap, it's white, everybody drives one, they never indicate to let you know which way they're going and it doesn't matter where you are in space, turn around, look behind you, there's a Zorgan Peterson hauler right up your ass. The first thing you're going to need is obviously a mining laser. Uh, this occupies one of your weapon hard points and if you're flying a Zorgan Peterson hauler you only have one weapon hard point. Various different grades of mining laser available, but initially you're just going to want to stick with the cheap and cheerful version because it doesn't draw an awful lot of power. It's not going to overload your power plant. And there's your mining laser. The next thing that you're going to need is another new piece of equipment, the refinery module. Now, this fits inside one of your internal compartments, the same kind of compartments that are used to house things like cargo bays, docking computers, and discovery scanners. The refinery module fits into the same kind of internal compartment where you can find things like cargo holds, docking computers, and discovery scanners. By all means, go ahead and replace your discovery scanner, or if you have one, docking computer, with the refinery module, but for God's sake, don't replace your cargo hold. Because yes, you're going to need that as well. Finally, you're going to have to actually find somewhere where you can mine asteroids. So, first of all, you need to find a star system that actually has an asteroid belt. Ideally, that star system is also going to have an orbital where you can dock, refuel, and hopefully sell the minerals that you've processed. The perfect system will not only have an orbital and an asteroid belt, but the orbital is going to have the kind of refinery-based economy where there's an actual demand for the materials that you're mining. At first glance, the Nangtakan system looks ideal. It's got a Haypoint orbital, which specializes in refining. Unfortunately, 
closer inspection of the asteroid belt reveals that the resources here have been depleted. Bummer, we're going to have to look somewhere else. Now, you could spend half an hour browsing the galactic map trying to find the ideal location, but Uncle Jingles has done it for you. The Kolorin system, not too far from the starting location, and it's absolutely perfect. It has not one, but two asteroid belts, both of which are chock full of metals. It has an orbital with a refinery economy that's just desperate for the kind of materials that you can mine from those asteroids. And the cherry on the cake, it's a high security system, regularly patrolled by system authority vessels. So the chances of you getting interrupted by pirates while you're busy doing your mining thing are very, very slim. So we've got our mining laser, we've got our cargo hold, we've got a refinery module, we've got the perfect place in which to actually do our mining, how does it actually work? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. You fly out to the asteroid belt, you pick any asteroid you like, and you start blowing chunks off it with your mining laser. Once you've blasted a chunk free, you go chasing after it, trying to match rotation and velocity with your cargo scoop deployed, and suck it up into your refinery module. Now, a lot of asteroids will only have one material inside them, but a lot of them will have more than one. The cheapest version of the refinery module only has one cargo hopper. And what that means is that if you blow a chunk off an asteroid that contains more than one material, and you're using the very cheap version of the refinery module, you have to pick which of those two elements you're going to process. You can see this asteroid chunk contains both palladium and silver. It contains a lot more palladium than silver, so I'm going to go for the palladium. If I can just line this thing up. Move in. Bang, got it. Once you've got the asteroid chunk nice and safe inside your refinery module, you have to choose which of these two elements you're going to process. Unless, of course, you've bought a slightly more expensive refinery module that's got two hoppers, in which case you're not going to have to throw anything away. The cheap and cheerful version of the module that I'm using only has one hopper, so I've elected to discard the silver and I'm going to process the palladium. The asteroid that I'm harvesting, uh, it has a lot more palladium in it than it has silver, so I'll actually be able to fill up the cargo hold faster if I concentrate on the palladium. And palladium is worth a lot of money. Now, you do have to do this a number of times before you've extracted enough resources to fill up one complete ton of cargo space, at which point whatever you've harvested is moved from your refinery into your cargo hold. That's why you must also have a cargo hold, not just the refinery module. And that, in a nutshell, is exactly how you do asteroid mining in Elite. There's just one downside. It's really boring. <laughs> I mean, it's worse than watching paint dry. You don't have to do anything when you're watching paint dry. This isn't like asteroid mining in EVE Online, for example, which you can pretty much automate and go AFK while you're busy you have to actually be working at doing this. You've got to target the asteroid, you have to fire the lasers, you then have to chase after and attempt to maneuver the asteroid chunk into your cargo scoop. Then you have to process it. You have to, if, if you're using the low end version of the refinery module, you have to decide which element you're gonna process and which element you're gonna vent into space. And you have to do it over and over and over. And it takes a really, really long time to even get one ton of resources transferred from your refinery module into your cargo hold. The upside to asteroid mining is that it is very, very profitable. I mean, there are no overheads. You are quite literally just picking up free money from space. And if you're doing it in a high security system, as I'm doing here in the coal rid system, there's practically no risk associated with it whatsoever. But it is very, very tedious. If you have the patience, however, well, I only had the patience to mine one ton of palladium, and I sold that for over 14,000 credits. And while asteroid mining is never going to be the most exciting thing you could be doing at Elite Dangerous, at least it's safe, and it doesn't have the kind of risks associated with whatever this poor sucker was trying to smuggle out of Coon Colony Orbital. Yep, you'd better get that looked at, mate. That's going to leave a mark. So that's asteroid mining in Elite Dangerous. It is not something that anybody is ever going to describe as exciting, but it is incredibly profitable. And I suspect a lot of people are going to try their hand on it quite early on in the game, as soon as they've got the money required 
to set themselves up with a mining vessel um, until they can't stomach it anymore, but they have at least made a pot full of money which will enable them to move on to bigger and better things. So that's it from me and this short guide to mining in Beta 3 in Elite Dangerous. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next time.